Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, <clears throat> uh, like usual, we're just going to give everybody like a minute to show up and then we're going to start going over uh, today's lecture and just some important announcements about what's coming up this week since we are in the last week of the term. I can't believe it. It has gone by so fast. Um, but, sorry. Uh, while we're waiting for everybody to show up, I will just uh, go over a couple of things with you guys on what is coming up. So just to give you guys a heads up on um, what the next week is going to look like. <clears throat> so first off, you guys still have some stuff to do. So that unit eight homework is going to be due the fourth, just so you guys have some time to do it, go over it. The unit nine homework is going to be due the fifth. Your exam two is due tomorrow. And finally, your final exam is going to be due the eighth. Okay, so there are some important due dates to keep in mind as we move forward this week. Um, the final exam is not going to be timed. So you can take as long as you want. It is expected that you do it in one sitting, so don't close it and reopen it. Just keep it open and um, get through that. It's just like all the other exams, so it's going to be open notes, open technology, whatever you guys would like to um, use for that. So these due dates are also on Canvas, <clears throat> under the calendar, and under the assignments. So what we are going to be doing this week so our last week is that Monday through Thursday, we're going to be going over unit nine. And then Friday, we are going to be reviewing for the final. So any topics that you guys want to go back over, um, be sure to look through those and ask me in order to get ready for the final exam. Also, what we'll be doing on Friday is I'll be giving you guys some hints on what to remember and how to study for the final and also sort of things that won't be on the final. So things not to worry about. All right, so there's your little breakdown of what we're going to be going over this week. The other key thing that I wanted to point out is that next week we will not be meeting. So no class meetings next week. Now that's really standard for um, all of your classes. So the week of finals, our classes don't meet. There's no office hours. However, if you do have a question, you want to meet up with me, anything like that, just shoot me a text message or an email and we can definitely work something out. Um, I'm still going to be around. I'll be working on getting next term ready, wrapping up grading, things like that. So I haven't fallen off the map. It's just that we won't have any um, regularly scheduled class meetings or office hours next week. All right, so before we get started on the actual unit nine topic, does anybody have any questions for me? I have a quick question. Sure, Tali, what's up? So on the unit eight um, homework that was that's going to be due in a while, mm -hmm. there was a question on there that was like kind of like, um, are the conditions met in this scenario? I got it wrong, but I wasn't quite sure how. Okay, let me take a look at that real quick. Okay. 
All right, do 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 do. That's unit eight, right? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. All right, let me just pull it up real quick. Oh. There we go. All right. Do you remember which question that was, Talia? Off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. I know it was just a kind of like a one blank answer where it's like either yes, no, and then it gives like the two different conditions on why. Okay. All right. I'm trying to find it real quick on my homework. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about oh, that. No, it's all good. Okay. I found it. So remember that the um the condition is that it needs to be random and the expected count in each cell needs to be greater than five. So what you need to do is that you need to take this and put it into that um, chi-square calculator that we have and then see what the expected count for each cell is. And you should get that the expected count for each cell is greater than five. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to try that again. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions before we get started today? Nope, looking good. All right. Cool. So we'll go ahead and get started with unit nine. So So the first topic that we're going to talk about in unit nine, which is going to be discussing something called linear regression. which we'll get to what that is later, but the first thing that we need to talk about is scatter plots. So what a scatter plot is, is it's going to be a graph. where the x-axis is a numerical variable and the y-axis is also a numerical variable. and each point is an observation. So what this is going to do is that we're going to have two numerical variables and each dot is going to be a single person or object and then we're going to do that over and over and over with different people and different observations and what we're going to end up getting is we're going to end up getting a graph and hopefully it'll show us something about that relationship. 
So let's go ahead and look at a little example of a scatter plot. So let's say that we have two numerical variables. Let's say that we have um, height and time. Okay, and let's say that height is going to be measured in centimeters, so that's important. And let's say that time is is time spent in traffic. And let's say it's in minutes. Let's say that we have the following heights for somebody. So let's say that somebody is 172 centimeters tall. And let's say on average that on their commute to work, they spend say 20 minutes in traffic. Okay, and let's say another person is 160 centimeters tall and they spend five minutes in traffic. Okay, so we'll just do these four observations for fun. Now, when we draw a graph for this, okay, so we're gonna have our x-axis and our y-axis. So our x-axis, we're gonna let that be time. And we're gonna let our y-axis be the height. Okay, and let's do this as five. 10, 15, 20, 25. And then for height, we'll go 150, 160, 170, 180, and 190. All right, now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go and plot each of these points as a point on the graph. So for example, the point 172 and 20, so 172 would be about right here, and 20 would be about right here. So that would be a single point. That would be this point right here. And we're just gonna keep going. So 160, 125, 170 and 20 would be about there. 175 and 15 would be about right there. All right. <clears throat> now, that's only four points, so it's not really a whole lot to see any sort of pattern or a trend. So what we'd like to do is we like to get a whole lot more data. So let's just pretend like we have a whole lot more data that we've collected. And let's say that we draw it on this graph. So let's just go ahead and put some points here. Okay, so this would be an example of a scatter plot where each dot represents a single object or a person. And we're trying to see if there's a relationship between these two numerical variables. So is there a relationship between height and time? <clears throat> so 
So when I'm looking at this, what I can see is that it just kind of looks like paint splatter. So because I don't see any pattern or trend, or I don't see any dots that are really close together, this would probably lead me to say that height and time probably aren't related. It's not like taller people don't spend as much time um, in traffic as short people. Okay, so this scatter plot. Shows no relationship. Between height and time. <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at another example where there is a relationship between two things. All right, let's say that we are looking at the relationship Let's say we're looking at a scatter plot. Or income versus the number of children somebody has. Okay, so let's put income at the bottom. And we'll put number of children for our y axis. <clears throat> okay, and let's say. We have a scatter plot that looks like this. So, what the scatter plot is implying is it's implying that as income increases the number of children somebody has decreases. So if we were to draw kind of a general shape around this guy, or kind of a trend line, like so, kind of looks like a banana. And it also tells us that as we move from left to right, so as income goes up, we can see as the number of children seems to decrease. So when we're looking at these scatter plots, <clears throat> there's already a couple of things that we notice when we're looking at them. And one thing that we notice is that if there is a relationship, we're usually going to have a relationship that has some sort of trend. So that means as one thing goes up, another thing goes down, or both go up or both go down. The other thing that we're going to be looking at 
is the general shape. So we can see that this one is kind of curved. Sometimes they're perfectly straight. Sometimes they have a lot going on and bounce up and down. And the last thing that we're going to be looking at is the strength of this relationship. So are these two things closely related? Are they not closely related? Things like that. So when we are describing these scatter plots, There's going to be actually four key things we're going to look at. So the first one is the trend. Which is as our x changes, How does y change? Now, when we talk about trends, we're going to have three main kinds that we're going to be interested in. Okay, so the first one. is going to be a positive trend. The second one is going to be a negative trend. And the third one is going to be changing. So changing means it's either going from positive to negative or negative to positive. So a positive trend means as you're looking from left to right, you're going to see your graph go up. And a negative trend means as you're looking from left to right, you're going to see your values going down. And again, changing means you're just going to see it change. So this one goes from positive to negative. <clears throat> Now, another way to think of these is as x goes up, our y value is also going to go up. So as we can see here, our x and y are both small. But as x goes up, our y also goes up. A negative trend means as our x value goes up, our y value is actually going to go down. So you can see as our x value increases, our x value goes from smaller to bigger. Our y value starts to go down. All right, how do you guys feel about that so far? Looking OK? All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Positive up, negative down. Got it. Nailed it. Good job. All right. So <laughs> the next thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to linear regression or scatter plot is going to be the shape. And you guys have got it so nice. So nice. The next thing is the shape. And the reason the shape is so nice for you guys is because you guys are only going to have to be concerned with two shapes.
So a shape is either going to be linear, which means a straight line, or it's going to be nonlinear. So a linear would be something like this. For overall, if you were to circle it and draw a line through most of your points, you'd have a fairly straight line. Nonlinear, anything that doesn't look like that. Okay, so for example, this graph we would consider nonlinear. Because if we draw a general shape around all of our points, we get something that doesn't really look like a straight line. So the reason I say you guys have it so easy is because when I took this class, we had to describe the shapes using some more complex terms like parabolic, sinusoidal, exponential. But in our case, you just say, hey, man, that's a line or hey, man, that's not a line. Okay. All right, the third thing that we are going to use when we're describing a scatter plot is we're going to be talking about the strength. So the strength needs just a little bit more um, description than the last two. So when we're talking about the strength, we're going to be looking at the vertical variation. And I like to kind of think of this as like the tightness of our dot. So if they're very scattered, then they're going to be weak. And if they're really close or tight together, then we're going to consider that a strong relationship. Can you give you guys probably one of my favorite examples? So let's say that we are looking at <clears throat> height and weight. And we look at waist measurement and weight. So here's the deal, is that two people can be the same height, but have pretty different weights, right? So what that means is that we're going to have a fair amount of scatter over here.
Now, if you're looking at somebody's waist measurement and their height, people who have about the same waist measurement are going to have different weights. But those weights are probably going to be closer together. So what we see here is that we see something that has probably a moderate strength. And on the right, we see something that has a stronger relationship. And again, the way that you can kind of think about that is if you were to look at the vertical distance between the points, we can see that the vertical distance over here is shorter. That means that they're closer together. That means that we're going to have less variation, which means that the relationship between somebody's waist measurement and their weight is going to be stronger than the relationship between somebody's height and their weight. All right, now I told you that there was four things that we were going to look at when we were looking at scatter plots. And the fourth thing feels kind of obvious, but people forget about it like a lot. So the four things that we need to consider when we're looking at a scatter plot is we need to consider the context. So by context, what I mean are two things. What variables are being observed? And what is the overall range of the variables? And we'll get to that a little bit later. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you guys an example and we're just gonna look at it and kind of talk it out together, okay? And then I'll give you guys one to do on your own. So below we have the scatter plot for age and height. Let's say we're going from 10 years old, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, 
And then we're going to have Scatter plot that looks something like this. It doesn't need to be exact. So, what we want to do is that we want to describe the scatter plot. When we're asked to describe the scatter plot, what it wants is it wants those four key things that we just talked about. So it wants the trend, the shape, trend, shape, strength, and context. So before I even get started on the shape, trend, um, strength, and context, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm just going to outline all of these points. Kind of draw a nice trend line going from left to right. This is going to help me in my description and also in terms of strength. So, what I can kind of see happening here when I look at this first off, let's talk about the trend is that the trend looks like it's increasing and then it also looks like it kind of putters out. Okay, like we're not going to have a whole lot of growth after 20. Okay, so when it comes to the trend, I would say that this has a changing trend. So it starts off positive and then it looks like it's going to change, get kind of constant. All right, the next thing is the shape. So notice that when I drew this line, I have this curve in it. So I would just say that this trend is nonlinear. And when it comes to the strength, notice that they were kind of a little bit tight to begin with, but then we actually get pretty wide and we have quite a bit of variation as we move out. So when it comes to the strength, I would say that because this has a general shape to it and I can see a general trend, I would say that this has a moderate strength. So just to recap, when I'm describing the scatter plot, and you can do this in full sentences or you can do it in bullet points, either way is totally fine with me. I would say the trend is changing. So it looks like it goes from positive to constant. For the shape, we don't have to be too fancy. We just have to say, is it a line or not a line? This one would be nonlinear. Remember, it's only going to be linear if you have a perfectly straight line. So since this one has a bend in it, it would be nonlinear. For the strength, because we still have a general shape, I'm going to say that it's moderate, so not strong, not weak, just moderate. And last but not least, we're going to be looking at context. So for the context of this, I would say as age increases,
height seems to also increase. And we could go on and say it seems to increase and then peter out, things like that. Mostly we're just noting that there does seem to be somewhat of a relationship between age and height. All right. So what I would like you guys to do next, we have 10 minutes left, is I'm going to put you guys into groups and I want you to come up with two numerical variables and I want you to talk about what you think their scatter plot would look like. What do you think the relationship between the two things would be? So I'm just going to throw some out there just to get your brains kind of going. Um, age of a car and its price. Weight of a car and its gas mileage. Um, the age of a person and hospital visits anything like that, okay? The sale of turkey and the sale of stuffing, you know, as one goes up, does one go down? Do they both go up at the same time? Things like that. So I'm gonna put you guys into breakout rooms. I want you to discuss two numerical variables and what you think their scatter plots would look like. All right, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that. And then we'll come back together and we'll share our examples. And I'll come up with an example too, just to make it fun and fair. <laughs> 